Okay, we are about to exit campground. The lines are still really long. It's like 45 minutes to get to the exit. Yeah, but it seems like someone's directing traffic now or something. It's a pretty big line still. We're two hours into the evacuation and we are on Icefields Parkway still trying to turn left onto Highway 16. Yep. On Monday, July 22nd, we had our first full day in Jasper. We went into town, did laundry, and walked around. It was a hot day and we went swimming in the afternoon at Annette Lake. It was pretty smoky, so we didn't take very many photos or videos. In the evening, we went up to Edith Cavell to hike. The storm came in right as we started hiking with tons of lightning and gusts of wind, so we decided to turn around. The tree just fell over the road we were on. Another huge tree fell down. When we drove back down the mountain towards the town, we thought at first that it was improving in the amount of smoke, but once we got onto the main road, it was really, really smoky. We filled up on gas because we were planning to drive to Moline Lake the next day. There was quite a bit of visible dark smoke around already at this time. The forest fire is coming from over there. When we got back to Whistler's campground, we went to the cook shelter to make dinner this point, it was after 9 p.m. As we were finishing up our dinner, we got an emergency alert to our phones that there was a wildfire happening close to the area and we had to evacuate immediately. The wildfire had actually started very close to where we were hiking and had just driven from. At first, they said that the town had to be evacuated between 10 p.m and 3 a.m., which some people took to mean that the fire would be there by 3 a.m., which was in five hours. So they reissued another alert. So the ash is falling from the sky. People aren't really rushing too much. We very quickly packed up our food and our dishes and started taking down the tent. Luckily, we have a backcountry set up and don't have too much out at our campsite, so we were able to pack up and be driving away in under 20 minutes from the alert telling us to evacuate. It's pretty smoky, pretty ashy. It was like blue sky here like half an hour ago. Everyone's packing up and moving now. Okay, we have packed up and we are heading out of the Whistler's campground. Most of the people around us are packing up or have already packed up. Lineup. It's pretty the crazy. Traffic's gonna be crazy. Oh my gosh. Traffic. Oh my oh goodness. Oh my goodness. It's quite the traffic jam. Wonder if the other way is better. The traffic getting out of the campground was almost at a standstill. Okay, we are about to exit campground. The lines are still really long. It's like 45 minutes to get to the exit. Yep, yeah, but it seems like someone's directing traffic now or something. It's a pretty big line still. Because we're all of a sudden having spurts of more movement, so that's exciting. Or there's less traffic coming yeah. from ice fields. Because there's only so many cars that can be coming up from the ice fields. A lot of ash that's been falling on our windshield, which has been kind of crazy to see. But we'll see how it goes. We're two hours into the evacuation and we are on Icefields Parkway still 
trying to turn left onto Highway 16. And we're going to be heading to Vail Mount. But there's a lot of traffic because all of Jasper, south, east, and north, has to go through this one intersection up here. We were getting pretty tired just sitting in traffic, and it was past midnight at this point. How's it going? Oh, you know, I'm just trying. I was I'm tired. I was trying to sleep a bit, but I can't really sleep right now. How's it going, Rachel? Good. Um, I'm trying to calculate how many football field sizes the fire is. Rachel was tracking the fire using the NASA fire maps and took some screenshots over the course of the next few days. It started out very small but grew fast the next day when there were 100 km per hour winds. Having a fire to the north and south is obviously not ideal for controlling the fire size too. I just hope the traffic improves. Wow, it looks so smoky this way. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, here's the police directing on both ways. So now the light's red. But they might let us go because... No it looks one. like they're just following the light. Yep. Okay, recording. It's 1 10 a.m. finally on Highway 16 West. And we're heading to Vale Mount. Some park there to camp the grass. All the electric cars charging literally loaded up chargers wow. every single one we are heading to check out a church that has apparently opened its doors so we will see how that goes and hopefully there's some availability for our mats This will be our room for the night. When we arrived at the church, there was only like three other people there. And we got to like choose where we slept and stuff. At around 4.30 after going to bed at 3, I woke up to a lot of voices and noises. And in the morning we learned that five buses had come and dropped off other evacuees from Jasper. Vailmount is a very small town with just over a thousand people, but they did an amazing job rallying together to support evacuees. In our experience with the New Life Center, the people were so friendly and kind. Okay, this is Vailmount, the sights of this small town. It's not as smoky this morning, but we also came in at 3 a.m. when it was pitch black. It rained a lot. It did rain a lot, so that hopefully has helped clear out a lot of it. So we ended up driving all the way to Kamloops and then east on Highway 1 towards Banff where we had camping reservations. Passed quite a few other forest fires, including ones in Revelstoke and in Golden. We did a hike at Emerald Lake, which was also completely covered in forest fire smoke and raining ashes down on us. We're grateful that all the evacuees made it out safely and are so thankful for their first responders and firefighters. Every time we visit Jasper, we see so much wildlife. We hope they are able to adapt and survive this tragedy.